Oh. Rut row, Rorge. Uh. Why does it always <laughs> reset that on you? It's OBS. Every time OBS updates, it, it resets itself. Yeah, it's just the devil. So. Yeah. I gave up on OBS. I figured it out, and then I was like, mm, not worth it. I like it. I just, that's the one thing about it that drives me crazy is that it does that to me all the time. So. Yeah. But whatever. Whatever. I fixed it now. That's what's important. All right. Um, yeah. So anyway, there is a uh, fundraising down below for Planned Parenthood on Twitch. If you're interested, that is down there. Um, and we're going to talk about productivity in that whole kind of realm because, uh, you know, it's been a thing I've been dealing with right now is trying to figure out what the fuck I'm doing. So um, I guess the first thing I would want to say is like, what is everybody's... Like, do you know when you're productive or how productive you are, um, depending on different things? Like, do you keep track of those things? I do. Uh, for me, for productivity, I am very momentum driven, which is why NaNoWriMo and that sort of end sprints uh, usually work for me is, mm -hmm. you know, um, I have, I know based on my pace that if I miss a day, I will fall behind and be unable to catch up because I've never done two nanos worth of writing in a single day. So it forces me to do the sit down every day thing, but it's, it's unsustainable. I can't do it every month, but um, yeah, I, I find once I have three or four days in a row, I don't want to miss because I've already proven I can do it. And right. I'm most productive probably after 9 PM and you know, I stay up until I get my words in. I don't get to go to bed <laughs> until I hit my target when on, on those months. Right. So. Gotcha. CJ? Um, as far as writing goes, I... I'll be honest, I haven't had a lot of, like, consistency in productivity for the last year. Um, and part of that is like we moved and that upended my whole, like my whole life. I, I did some writing out in our backyard in my writing tent when we moved here. Mm -hmm. Um, but I hit a really bad patch mentally and just, um, and my life is pretty crazy. So um, I'm working on fixing that because it was not supposed to be this way. That's why I quit my 40 hour a week job. Um, but I also know that like, I have a tendency to um, forget or not calculate. Um, ow, 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 ow. Sorry. Kitten um, problems. Yeah. He, he wants me not to be in this chair. Is it his chair? It's where he sleeps at night. Um, and I interrupted his nap earlier, sorry. Um, so I know that I can be productive. Like last year, a year ago, mm -hmm. I wrote, I finished a novel in like two months. Um, and that was just consistently writing every day. But like you were talking about, it wore me out. So like I thought, oh, well, I'll take May and June off. And in July, I'll feel better. Well, then we moved. And that's like my productivity um, does not translate well if I don't have consistent time and a place where I feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and that's just, that's my biggest problem right now. So I'm trying to, at this point, I'm trying to figure out how to create that. Um, I've done a little bit. I, um, you can't see it because we're in a thing, but I got my desk done. Um, Yay. So I have, 
have a good space for writing. Um, this room is becoming more palatable for writing. Mm -hmm. um, I have some decor and stuff I need to put up, so I'll feel more like it's also a writing space as well as a music space. And the cat quotient has gone up. Our cat quotient has gone up. We are now a 3-2 household. Three cats, two people. So, um, so yeah, that's my thoughts on productivity. That's fair. Um, so, yeah, I don't, hold on. It's, I have some notes, not a ton, but, um, like, do you feel like you are guided by when you feel like writing, um, or when you, when, when the muse hits or whatever you would call it, do you feel like you're driven by that or do you write through that? Um, when, like, if you are in a productive phase, like, how do you deal with that? If you want to go first. I can go first this time. Yeah. Um, I have a tendency to fall back on the right when I want to, like when I feel like writing, um, especially like when I'm having mental health issues or um, I'm struggling. Um, keeping a steady schedule is just, it's beyond me. Mm -hmm. um, however... I do find that if, like, last year when I, I wrote a book in two months, um, and we're talking like 120,000 words. Um, so, like, I sat down and I wrote every day. I mapped out large sections of my day that were exclusively dedicated to writing. Mm -hmm. And whether I wrote the whole time or not, I was in my seat. I had my stuff right there. It was in front of me. Um, I did a lot of sprints on my own, like word sprints on my own. Um, when we talked about, uh, Morgan, you talked about how writing sprints are really helpful for you. Uh, I don't find them as helpful personally because I get distracted. Um, and that's like, that's on me. Um, so my problem is I have to cut myself off from the internet completely because the internet is my, it, it's a bad place for me when I'm trying to work. Um, <laughs> it just, it just is. Um, so I have to turn it off or I have to um, limit access to it in some way. Um, that was one of the reasons I started writing out in the writing tent was because I wasn't at my computer that is always attached to the internet. I was using my alpha smart and that's not attached to the internet at all. And I had my phone, but there's a limited amount of distraction that that can do, especially if I'm outside and I'm in that space. So, yeah. Uh, for, for me, I find the muse is good to about 20,000 words. And after that, it just takes discipline for me to keep going. Um, usually I, I do do the primary largest chunk of my writing during NaNoWriMo. And then I finish up the story after December because December doesn't, I don't write in December. I don't even try. I'm recovering from NaNoWriMo <laughs> and there's a lot of family stuff and yeah. just, it's <clears throat> not ever going to happen. And I never expect it to. But one of the things I've learned from past years, I, I like to set um, New Year's resolutions, right? Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, this month will be for reading books. This month will be for editing this month. Will... And these were based on how much I could get done in a good month not in an average month and a good month. And so I would hit the end of the month and I wouldn't be done with my editing and I would edit during my break month and never catch up and always yeah. feel like I'm running behind. And so finally last year, maybe the year before I was like, no, no, if I'm not there, I'm still taking the break because I need it. Obviously, yeah. if I'm not focused enough to be as productive as I'd like, mm -hmm. I have a day job, I have friends, I have other commitments and you know, none of this writing blogging stuff is paying the bills. Like it's not right. even paying for itself right now. So yeah. Um, 
but but yeah no i i muse is is not going to do it for me um and but giving myself grace definitely helps because if if i'm not being as productive as i want to be if it's just not coming if i'm unmotivated during sprints maybe that's time for me to just read for a while take a break play some minecraft if i'm not wanting to do it nobody's making me do this this is a choice of my own partially because i have these worlds and these characters and these stories in my head and if i don't write it i never find out what happens right. but um I, I do try to like prepare for months in which i know i'm going to be writing a lot i usually try to have some story idea and then save it up till november mm -hmm. Um, but one year I didn't, and I just took a bunch of ideas for short stories from friends and stuff and just did a nano of shorts because I want to work on my chapter pacing and some of them are supposed to be structured like short stories and it, it's yeah. just a concept. But yeah, Muse, um, I just, I try to jot down ideas when I have them yeah. and, you know, I, I do set aside time to listen to my Muse, but I don't, you know start writing the second the muse bonks me on the head right i will say that despite my lack of like typical productivity over the last six months or so mm -hmm. i have written quite a bit in my journal and and it includes story ideas it includes mm -hmm. um thoughts on characters in books i'm already working on um, I'm part of the writer's workshop, so I did some writing for that. Um, but, and I find this, this may, I may be jumping ahead a little bit in the topic. Um, but I was talking to my sister the other night and I left my nine to five job. Um, it'll be five years in July. That'll be the end of the fifth year. Um, and the idea was that it would, I would teach full time and that would give me time to write. Right. And my problem is I fill up that time with other things. Um, so I'm not even like offering myself the opportunity to be productive or to hear the muse or to do anything like that. Um, but one of the things I was telling my sister the other day is that one of my most challenging one of the things that challenges me most in terms of writing productivity is that consciously i know that reading is productive as a writer reading is productive but it doesn't feel like it but yeah if i lay in bed for two hours in the morning like i start my day with the two hour just reading you know for whatever I'm working on if I'm working on fantasy I read fantasy if I'm working on romance I read romance if I'm working I don't write sci-fi anymore but if I'm working on sci-fi I would read sci-fi but then I feel like I haven't done anything even though I've spent two hours reading um and so that's yeah that's a challenge yeah, I have that problem, um, especially with audiobooks, mm. where I'm like, well, but I mean, I was just listening to a book. Like, does that count? I mean, it does, but the part of me that wants me to be a loser says no. Um, I'm going to pop over to chat for a second and see what we have. Um, we have a ton of people here. Uh, Spence and Bonnie, Sky. hold on. If I miss you, it is totally by accident. Fairy Law was here, but I believe he left um do 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 eva's here and persephone is here and uh aphrodite just got here so hello to everybody if i missed you i'm very sorry it was not on purpose <clears throat> um i i promise cross my heart if i notice you and i know i missed you i will say your name still um but let's see what people have to say um sky said i need to plan for a little for little to no writing in December and January because those are both my worst months for writing always. Yeah, I mean, if you know that you're going to have an ebb there, there's no point in in not having it, like, in planning to just disappoint yourself. Right, yeah. 
Eva said, if I'm balls deep in a story idea, I'd love to have something to flip to for breaks, but I usually choose a series or game over sprint streams. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I really like doing most writing stuff other than editing, which I have a hard time doing this with, but, um, while listening to someone playing a video game, particularly a video game that it like doesn't, it's not terribly visually important. Yeah. Um, so that, that is like super chill for me. Um, so I, and writing sprints almost always will scare the piss out of me when I come back in. Um, and that's, that's why when I was doing them, I was trying to like turn on my sound for like two seconds so you could hear like the little hiss turn on. Cause I, it can scare you out of your damn chair if you're like just in the zone and it's really easy to forget that you were in a sprint stream and yeah. I, that's why I have the chillest chimes just kind of trickle in during my stream as, as my, as your, I hate your alarm. alarm. Yeah. I hate alarms so much. Yeah. yeah. Me too. I just, that's why I changed my, the, the timer I use, I changed the alarm uh, for that specifically because it's like a, the, the original app is. Ah, 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 yeah. I'm like, nope. Yeah, that's uh, the original sounds are the the reason it got called the demon app. Yeah, like it was the sound. Um, and then Sky said, uh, "These days, my lack of writing, my lack of writing isn't from a lack of muse, but a lack of energy, worn out from work, home life, something like that. Lately, when I sit down to write, words come easily. Um, and that's awesome. But I I do know that experience with the like, I'm just too tired to to freaking write, especially if like." you've been doing anything mentally draining because you know you can be you can be physically super like super uh unexhausted and like you go run a marathon but sitting down and writing two sentences sounds like the worst thing ever yeah yeah i was um there was something a, a writer and now i don't remember where i saw it it was it was on the interwebs somewhere um, so it's probably on social media, either Twitter, or maybe it was TikTok. I don't know, but a writer talked about how, um, they, there were all these other writers who were telling them you have to set a goal and you have, in order to be productive, you have to set this goal and it should be, I do, of words and, yeah, do yeah. what works for you. And what they said was they set a goal that they knew was doable every day, even on rough days. Mm -hmm. Um, And their goal was 200 words. I saw this. I think it was on Twitter. And I was like, that struck a chord for me because I have a tendency to like, when we're in NaNoWriMo, 1,667 words a day, that's not very much. I can write that in about an hour and a half. Yeah. If if it's, you know, if I'm, that's that's my average on a yeah on a non bad day as long as it's right. decent I can do it in ninety minutes right my, but then the problem becomes I can't do that every day yeah that's not sustainable for me I have you know I'm gonna have days where like you said Sarah physically I'm fine but I just had six lessons and five of them were with junior hires and everybody was having a meltdown today and I just don't have any more Mm -hmm. and like mental capacity to deal with the foibles of my characters like I just and and like the act of removing yourself from the from the real world and putting yourself back into where it belongs for the story so that you don't just go in there and just like write like like a toddler writing the story you know or like and then and then and then and and then then, and then did I, did I tell you that he did? Yeah, I told you. And then, and then, and then, and then, <laughs> like, those are not words. That does not help. That doesn't count. No, those words do not count. <laughs> but um, I was thinking, I was like, you know, I could set a really low bar to start with. Like, mm-hmm. if I said, I'm going to write 100 words a day. A mm-hmm. 100 words a day is so few words. Right. That, like, 
that is doable. And and what the writer was, what the, the post, the, the person who was writing it was saying, it's not that they only write 200 words a day. That's the minimum. Right, right. So on the days when they don't have the capacity to write 2,000 words or 5,000 words or even 500 words, they're still going to feel that. Yeah, pretend it's the speed limit. Right. <laughs> That's exactly. <laughs> Although I'd like to point out. <clears throat> I had a moment this morning when I was on my way. Oh, to I did too. Job. Where somebody was driving like super slow, like a moron. In the left-hand lane on the interstate. Oh, this one stopped before getting onto the merge. Not merging off of the merge. Stopped before the merge. Before oh. starting the merge. And you set them on fire with your brain, right? I almost <laughs> cried. It was pouring rain. Yeah. I'm like, for, for the love I'm like, oh, for the for love, the love of, Pete. of all cats in the world. I do not so, know Pete, but I feel sad for yeah. him. So well, I go to, when I go to work, it's a, I go on the interstate. There's an interstate that, well, there's two interstates. We're at the crossroads. Uh, and so one of them I can catch out to where my job is. Uh, there are four lanes of traffic for the vast majority of my drive. And it's about a 20 minute drive. Four lanes of traffic. Four or five people in the far left-hand lane doing five under the speed limit. Nobody asked thought, for this. No. I was pretty sure I was going to have an aneurysm right there on the interstate. I think I yelled, what the actual fuck nuggets? <clears throat> I think that might be what the what came out of my mouth because I was very distra- distressed about it because like, <laughs> it's morning and I'm merging onto the highway, you dingleberry. Right. As long as I'm not stuck behind a tractor, I've got relative patience, usually. Well, it's pouring down rain. I have to get all the way across to my turn um, about half a mile down. Mm-hmm. So, like, I also, and I drive a stick, so, like, I also need to get up to speed yeah. to be able to uh, get over and, like, uh, and it's not like you're, you're gonna kill a Lamborghini me. or something. No. Where you could make it from zero to sixty and No, and my car is my car isn't made for water. Like it really no. just isn't. I, I drive a bug. Like it it's prime prime conditions for a bug is about seventy four degrees and um desert. Which is not outside Chicago. No. No. Mm-mm. Nope. <laughs> Not Northern Illinois. I've no. figured out how to make it safer for me to take the exit I need off of a highway I drive regularly. Because normally I need to get off the highway as two lanes are coming on. And that's horrible. But if I take the previous exit, it's one of those exits that parallels the highway with the people oh, going yeah. off and the people coming on. But if I get in the exit lane, and then just go straight through, then I don't have to deal with them coming over and me trying to get over two lanes to get to my exit. I think I'm going to be doing that regularly. Like, I I know it's semi-illegal, but it also doesn't help that there's been construction there for, like, three years now that (laughs) what is the right (coughs) lane before they merge is gone. So, yeah, Yeah. it's it's a nightmare. All right, I'm going to pop back into chat because we... uh... Yeah. Left them behind here. Let's see. Distracted. Sorry. It's all good. Uh, Aphrodite said I'm pretty regimented, but that includes time where I don't write or work. Uh, I'm a big planner, but I always advise folk to remember uh, to schedule time off as well. And that's totally true. Yeah. Um, and yes, all the dirty words are welcome in my chats, uh, but uh, sometimes I have to approve them. I bet you cunts already approved, though. Um, that would not surprise me yeah probably uh eva said i'm over here not finishing drafts so maybe it'd be different if i were actually finishing things i can write for an hour or during sprints in a two-hour stream and hit 2k or more words easy so nothing motivates me to finish and i can write like the dang wind uh and still get nowhere yeah yeah and that's so frustrating because then you feel like you haven't been productive at all. Right, right. And Persephone said mental fatigue versus physical t- fatigue. There's really no difference. Yeah, there really isn't. Yeah. Um, Aphrodite said, I think the reason I can always write is because writing is all I have. Uh, but I think it's crazy for folks 
to tell others how they have to write in order to succeed in writing. I think anytime you're doing a creative thing, um, there is no absolute. Yeah. Just like if it's creative in nature, there are <clears throat> good ideas and bad ideas. There are things that probably won't work, but there's no absolutes. Yeah. There's always an exception to every rule. Yeah. And rules should really be treated as guidelines at best. Right. Yeah. Um. And there's the thing where whatever your process is, doesn't mean it's going to work in six months. Doesn't mean it's going to yeah. work in a year. So if you're saying this is how to do it, and then you hit the point where it's not working for you anymore. Right. It's, it's like what I say at work, you know, processes exist to get the work done. If the processes are getting in the way, yeah. the, they need to change. Yeah. If they're not working for you, change them. You, you know? know what absolutely stupid shit I was doing is I was like, well, I don't want to write now because I'm going to sprint later. Oh, yeah. Been there. And and here's the other the other side note is if you're actively running a, spree, uh, a stream, your sprints are much less long than everybody else's sprints. Yeah. Because you're like actively doing things. So, I half the time just totally ignore my chat while I'm on the sprint. But if I'm not feeling like writing, I've got all this blog stuff I gave myself to do. So I always have housekeeping I can do during a sprint if I'm not feeling creative. See, yeah. well, and I have time anxiety. Like my anxiety is directly tied oh, to time. Yeah. So the idea, like when the timer would go off and I would act like I was upset, I, I was genuinely upset. Like it's it's a yeah. problem for me. <laughs> so And you you take it one step further and you make sure that every like the other people on your stream know Yeah. Hey, you got twenty seconds. Well, but you guys can't see this the clock either. That was part of the reason I did that. Yeah, but you also like you're really my thing is that that's that's an additional aspect for you. Yeah. So like if you're keeping track of the time and you're looking for ways to make other people's streaming or streaming sprinting experience more useful then yeah. that's definitely going to take away from your time yeah i suppose that's true um and then just like being on for me i know some people are perfectly comfortable being on camera and they're just you know like um i'm friends with q and she can stream for six hours that makes me want to throw up like that is that sounds so exhausting yeah it, two two hours is good for me yeah and if i'm playing video games or something where i'm kind of out of the streaming mode a little more i could probably right. go a little longer um yeah. but man six hours every time i see her do it i'm just like oh wow you are like a weird superstar <laughs> like, i mean i I've, I've gone over I've, I've gone three four hours sometimes like if i'm trying to get some editing done because I need longer mm -hmm. stretches when I'm editing. Um, and, you know, sometimes people hang out and sometimes they don't. But, you know, if, if I'm pushing towards the end of something and yeah. I know I just need another couple hours. But yeah. six is a lot. Unless you're doing like half hour, 45 minute sprints and ignoring the chat the rest of the time. Um, right, right. She does do, like she rolls dice for the length of the sprints. So sometimes they are uh, yeah, really long. Yeah. Some, yeah. Sometimes they are very long. So that is true. Um, but like it's for me, being on in front of the camera for me is exhausting to start with. Yes. So like after six hours, I think I would just be a puddle. A I mean, puddle I'm, of I'm, I am not judging. I am super impressed. Just to make it very clear. It is impressive as hell to me. Like I just, oh, after like a two hour stream, I'm just like, oh. So I can't imagine. I just can't. I think it it might just make my heart fall out of my body. <laughs> we don't want that. That would be bad. Right. Sky said the most I can do per stream nowadays is three hours, which we've done for 10K day streams. You know, I probably could do a three hour with like a two hour break. I probably could cycle that way um, on occasion. I'll be right back. Okay. Yeah. I could yeah, probably right. do like a day. Mm-hmm like a 10 K day or whatever, where I did a three hour, two hours off, three hours on two hours off. As long as I knew ahead of time I was doing it and I knew exactly how long it went. 
yeah 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 definitely um cycling back to what cj was saying is Mm -hmm. um the minimum requirement (laughs) per day reminds me of something i used to call you know my just five minutes approach where i sit down and i work on it for just five minutes if i get five if that's all i get done that's fine but usually once i get going I usually get at least half an hour. Sometimes I get my full amount in, you know? Yeah, I've started um, on Saturday mornings. I get up about 50% of the time. I'm the first person up by several hours. Um, But I've been trying really hard. I get up and make myself open Premiere so that I can work (laughs) on a video. And just, like, I open it and then just, like, let it be open until I just suddenly start working on something. (laughs) So... Um, then there's always a podcast that's actively going. So, (sighs) but yeah, um, let's see. Eva said, I'll talk up a storm in this little box here, but pass on the screen stuff. I understand that. It makes perfect sense. Um, but yeah, what's, I, uh, opened a bunch of resources regarding productivity and productivity. I don't know how I say it when I start thinking about how I say it. No, I don't know how I say it. Um, but so I thought we could go through some of these and see if there are any, any of this is stuff that um, we've tried or that we've heard of or because some of it actually is a little odd. Um, yeah, some of it's like very specific to some other class that this is related to, I guess. Um see if there's anything on this one that we haven't talked about i don't think so on that one so i i wanted to talk a little bit about how um i've I've done camp nanowrimo a bunch of times and i've lost over half of them and this year i actually quote unquote won i hit my goal Mm -hmm. and i think part of my problem was is this counters what we were just talking about but was setting my goal too low. If I didn't have to do something every day, if I didn't have a high enough goal, then I would start making excuses. And once I start making excuses, I can, I can make excuses all day or all month. Like this year I was going to edit 20,000 a month, just 20,000 words. Um, and at the end of March, I had edited 16,000 words total not for March, but total. And then I was like, okay, let's try upping my goal to 40,000. And then I managed to finish finally doing my first pass on my space fantasy and I got it off to my alpha reader. So sometimes, you know, if, if you are like me and you are momentum driven, if there is a month that, you know, where you've recovered from the hard push, I, I think I've, I don't know if I can do it more than quarterly. Yeah. But I think that, that definitely goes back to what you were saying earlier yeah. in terms of like productivity is all about what works for you right now. Right. Yes. And like almost anything else, sometimes it's a, um, what do they call that? A, uh, it's a try and fail, try again. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, yeah. Kind of situation. And and this space fantasy I'd written twice. And the first time after I finished NaNoWriMo, I was just doing a small amount per month until it was the story was done. Uh-huh. And because of that, I was only looking the next scene ahead rather than where am I trying to go with this? And it veered totally off track and turned into tax fraud and um, school <laughs> field trips, which isn't the story I wanted to tell. So then I had to throw away like, you know, yeah. I, I managed to salvage about 30,000 words, but you know, but yeah. It, yeah. So if I don't have the momentum, if I'm not looking at that end goal, I can just be like phoning it in and what'll get me my words enough to keep going. And then it slowly veers and veers and veers. And I think that's that, that idea that as a writer, and as a creative, I think this is true of any creative yeah. endeavor, is that we, while we can get into the details, and the details are important, 
right. we also have to be aware of the bigger picture um, whatever that means in your creative, whether that means, you know, whatever yes. you're painting or writing or whatever, or maybe it, it means that you don't get so involved in, you know, one aspect of your creativity that you neglect the rest of it. Well, that's another question is, um, what percentage of productivity are you considering actively writing and what percentage would be other things because obviously if you only write if that's all you do there it's not going to go anywhere and you're not going to make any money and it's not going to like like yep there's stuff on my hard drive hooray yeah it becomes a hobby right right unfortunately um i wish people could just buy osmosis be like yeah your book's good so here's some money yeah right that would be great um I felt it in force. But yeah, like, um, I lost track now. Um, you have to, you're talking about long-term focus. Yeah, we're doing really done. good at it. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. No, you said, you asked um, how much of productivity, product fright oh, you yeah. consider. Like, yeah, like what, how much of that should be things outside of the act of writing? Because I, I would bet there would be a general, um, thank you for the five bits. Yeah, I bet there would be a general idea. Like, you know, even if it's like somewhere between five and 15%, you know what I mean? Like, I, I would bet there would be a general idea, but I don't know what it would be. And to be honest, uh, I bet you I put more into that than I should to like all of the other stuff. Do as I yeah. say, not as I do. I <laughs> spend more time on my blog, my vlog, my podcast than I do on my writing. And that's really not where my focus should be. But right. but I have momentum. I haven't missed a week since I started. It's been right. five, seven years. I don't want to. So. Um, and that does, like, there is something to be said for that. Um, that feeling of accomplishment that is really hard to gain as a creative because mm. um, I don't write, have like, views but I have uh, stats yeah and that's right. like and in some I have a tendency and this is why I don't um you are not making good choices it's something I oh, can control bad cat. hang on hang on yeah got, do, do, do your thing hang we got a cat being naughty Oh no, I, I'm just, you know, it's something I can control is mm -hmm. my blog and my writing and stuff. But yeah. once it's out of my hands, I can't make somebody represent me. I can't make somebody buy my book. I right. can just put it out there and hope for the best. Right. Um, so, so there's, there's definitely some level of control. Um, and also with the blog, blog stuff, I know when I'm done. And it's mm -hmm. a short, discreet item. You know, it's something that can be checked off. A manuscript isn't something you can check off in two hours. Right, right. Absolutely. So, yeah. Do you, um, when you set goals, do you set like super specific goals? Um, I mean. You're driving I, I me crazy. Read X number of books Cats this year. Um, edit at least one manuscript. Write something new for NaNoWriMo you know yeah yeah that's um do you tend to look at word count or time count or do you not really look or i i look at word counts i okay. really do uh for NaNoWriMo i do the NaNoWriMo thing for editing i usually try to average 10 pages a day or a session mm -hmm. um and so that's just you know a chunk because editing less than 10 pages you barely remember what was happening before you're done right and that's True. not conducive right that's one of the things that i realized i absolutely could not during like do during like on-screen sprints was was editing like i just you're, can't in your 15 minute sprints there's <laughs> no way i can do some editing yeah, yeah no. i just can't 20 25 i can i can mostly get in the groove i read incredibly slow um, like uh, super fucking slow. Um, I don't quite know why, but I just do. But, um, so that's always a, a hindrance as well. 
it could just be the you know your visual processor is set up at that speed yeah i don't know i always have though it's not like new is, I didn't is get, it like, just reading happy. or is it you know other sort of visual cues as no, well just reading okay uh and yep. let's be clear it's i am a speed reader but i tend to skim so I will have to read something, particularly novels that, that are dense. I might have to read it three or four times to get the amount of stuff that Sarah gets out of it. Like I, she I, absorbs so much more on a single pass, slow or not, she's absorbing way more information than somebody like me who's like, Zoom, and I'm done with the book. <laughs> I don't remember. I, like. I read fast and I skim some, partially because I realized I don't care what color their eyes are. Yeah. Um, but there was one book. I, I, I was reading a sequel to a book and I was like, I don't remember any of this stuff that happened before. So I went back and I reread it. And it had been a year since the, the, for the book before it came out. And I reread it and I remembered absolutely nothing wait this two paragraph scene i remember that nothing <laughs> in the book so i had to have read it because there's no other way i would have known that one little thing but the none rest of it, it was gone none that's ridiculous yeah oh, human brains like, are odd we really are yeah oh how bizarre how bizarre um let's see eva said uh, I've been contemplating going to a time goal, writing X amount of time each day on a specific piece. Uh, is it only with reading or just uh, or with comprehension when listening as well? Uh, yeah, I listen to audiobooks and I listen to audiobooks like sped up and everything. It's it's not it's not a comprehension problem. It's just my I, I think it's just the way I read. Um, do you when you read, do you read a phrase and it translates to a phrase in your head or are you reading each word individually aloud in your head kind of when you read that makes sense sort of um i because i definitely read like that when i'm editing i don't know I had a thought and then it kind of trickled away. I'm trying to like think of how to. I don't know. Sometimes I read things two or three times while I'm reading them. Okay. Like I regularly write in books while I'm reading. Like regularly. Yeah. Yeah. So. Sorry, I'm a librarian's daughter, and my sister's six months from her MLS. That made me cringe. I dog ear pages. I refuse to use a bookmark. Don't oh, I it. refuse to, but that's because I don't put down the book till I'm done. Yeah, no, I dog ear pages, and I dog at three a.m. I will read two bit pages and dog ear that bitch again. Don't care. My sister has a bag that says bookends or uh, bookmarks are for quitters. My sister calls them quitter strips. Yeah um i there for people with self-control who can put down a book and move on with their lives before they finish the story so i applaud people who can do bookmarks uh, i have a lot of bookmarks but i don't you use don't them. you don't see 3 a.m nearly as often as i do <laughs> the book kept you up i here's my thing about writing in books or dog earring um because I've worked in several libraries. I've I've been a mender of book. Like one of my jobs was to mend books. That's super cool. It I mean, it was a cool job. Um, don't get me wrong. It was work study. It was a pretty cool work study. Yeah. Um, also, I learned how to fix books. Do not use scotch tape. Um, and Elmer's glue and wax paper are your best friends. Um, but one of the things that I found is that as I've gotten older, I love reading books that other people have written in um, because I love to see what, there's a connection for me in reading a book. You're, you're reading the words of somebody 
you may be reading the words of somebody who's long dead or who, you know, this, it's been 40 years. They're not the same person that they were. Um, or even if it's been five years, they're not the same person that they used to be when they wrote the book. So like you're hearing the voice of somebody who doesn't really exist anymore and you add, you add notes to that. And I do think notes are more intriguing when you know the person. So like I've borrowed books from uh, my sister or my dad and they have notes in their books. Um, and these are mostly nonfiction. So, you know, that does make a difference. But it's wonderful to like see what they were thinking when they read this section or like how they highlighted something. And I have highlighted in books things. Um, it's one of the things I love about Kindle mm -hmm. um, is that I can highlight things. And nobody gets mad at me. Um, so like that's very valuable. But I also I like paper books with somebody else what color pen did you use or did you use a pencil is it all smudged now is there like did you use a pink pen did you use a you know standard black did you what did you do what were you thinking and so there's extra personality mm -hmm. um i like seeing where other people have dog-eared you know did you <laughs> dog ear and then you like and this is me i wonder what caused you to stop here was it a time thing did you have to set the book down because it was too intense? Because I've done that with books. I haven't put it in the freezer yet, but like I've put books down because I'm just like, I can't, I can't handle this right now. Um, so do I you do, that. do you do Kindle? I do Kindle. Yeah. Do you have it turned on so you see things that other people highlighted? Yeah. <laughs> um, it, really it could just be, I was raised without any notes in books so I never fell in love with notes in books and it's also like being the child of a librarian one of the things I found is that there are a lot of librarians especially of the older um of those who are richer in years <laughs> richer and, in years and of the um the um more uh 20th century mindset of knowledge and literature. Um, they do tend to be very twitchy about um, <laughs> about marks and books. Yeah, I was just I was trying to figure out how to say it because it's not just marks. It is the like the dog years. Like I can remember um, librarians checking books in unnecessary wear. Yeah, there we go. Although I still maintain that if you let your dog chew on a book and then you return it to the library, you owe the library to repair that book. Yeah, I, it, it definitely didn't help that um, my mom worked at a rural high school with mm. like where everybody was free lunch, free breakfast because they they didn't have money in that county. Oh and yeah, so you don't by, have money to replace By books. her senior by the year of mom retired, the last five years, the only book budget had come up from grants. Mm -hmm. And it was maybe $500 a year, if that. Yeah, to get new stuff to replace stuff because all the library budget was going for the computer stuff. Yeah. And that was necessary at that time. Like, you don't, if you don't update, you can't. Yeah. Kids read things published the last five, 10 years. Yeah. They don't read older stuff unless they're me. Or, you know, me. Right, unless they've already read everything else. Right. But when they're starting out, they start with the new stuff. They're like, let me read, yes. I discovered Captain Underpants at the same time as my niece. <laughs> I still haven't read it, I should, but I haven't yet. But oh my gosh, I went through um, Ursula Vernon's uh, The Hamster Princess. I don't know, two years ago, and it was glorious, and I loved it. Uh, I had, you sounded like you were going to say something, Sarah. You want to bring us nope. back to topic? Nope, you're good. <laughs> uh, I have been reading in my, in my fantasy times, I've been reading a series called um, Demon Days and Vampire Nights. Oh. Um, and I highly recommend it. It's the writer. Um, 
but it's divided into sections. Mm -hmm. um, and each section is KF Breen, B-R-E-E-N-E. -E -E. uh, each section uh, has a different protagonist, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, it's, oh. yeah, it's delightful. Um, I have, I was going to say something about that, but I don't remember what. When I was leaving my office the other day at work, um, the wind was blowing. Okay. We're going to, we're going to not do this anymore. Go somewhere. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, the wind was blowing and it blew back on me and it hit me in my arm and it hurts so bad right now for no real oh, yeah. reason. Yeah. Like there's a bruise right in here. I don't know if the oh, camera's yeah. going to pick it up or not because it's got a thing on it, but it like blew back and you know how there's like a spinning lock yep. on like a business store? The lock hit me. Oof. Yeah. Yeah. But it's just like aching right now and it's actually like vastly better than it was. Oh, there it is. You can see it. It's way up here though. Oh, yeah. yeah. Ouch. And I don't bruise like almost ever. So... It hit me really hard, and right now it just is aching, and I don't know why. I don't know why! Um, and I just uh, fucked myself. Uh-oh. Sorry, I had to unplug my headphones because my sweater was stuck bad. on it. Okay. Um... So yeah, let's see if there's anything else going on in chat. Uh, yeah, the door kicked my ass. It really did. Um, I was super irritated because I go out that door like five times a day. <laughs> but the wind had picked up since I was last outside and it just slammed into me. It was terrible. Oh, anywho, is it? Uh, so let's see. Was there anything else? On the menu, I just opened the wrong thing. I know there is. Hopefully. I don't know. Maybe I'm done. Well, we haven't gotten to the... Uh, oh, next. that's right. That's right, because we were going to talk about uh, toxic productivity yeah. and the uh, whole idea of you have to get something done. Um, have you guys been in contact with someone who tried to kind of push that idea onto you. I I don't know that I've been in contact directly with like specific people, but I definitely wandered into like internet groups yeah. that were like that. Like, oh, you should go check out this Facebook writing group and you go in there and they're like, if you're not writing 1500 words every day, uh, don't call yourself a writer. Yeah. If you haven't published at least a dozen books, don't call yourself an author. And it's like, okay. Um, I have somehow managed to avoid those spaces oh but that's good i i have seen the people that say for them the writing advice they follow is right every day um but they don't usually try to push it on me yeah no and and i'm cool with people who like you know you have what you do like that's awesome um yeah. but yeah the the whole idea of like you know you're not you're not up to snuff if you're not reaching the goals that i've set for myself that kind of corner. Um, no. I have experienced it, um, interestingly, a little bit in the writing community, but more so outside of the writing community. Um, when I talk to friends or more of friendly acquaintances, although friends can unintentionally or family members can unintentionally yeah like poke you with it um that idea that uh, well are you really doing something and i could be like oh you know i i read a book for or i read you know four books this week on you know a, in a genre that i'm i'm working in and i learned some really cool ways of dealing with certain aspects of character development or, you know, whatever. 
And, but are you writing? Well, I didn't ask you if you're, you know, typing well, on your computer every second of the day when you're an accountant, but that doesn't mean you're not doing things. Right. And, and the thing that irritates me about that is that, like, the most about that is that, like, <clears throat> um, nobody, nobody really does one thing. Mm. Um, and nobody also nobody thinks that talking about writing is sufficient like we do have that conversation where you know if if all you're doing is talking about writing you're not actually writing we do have those conversations Um, but sometimes you talk about your job like doctors who do surgeries every day go to conferences like like, let's not can we please stop but it if you're going into the same groups every day, not responding to anybody else's and talking about the story you're brainstorming on, right? you get feedback and buy-in and somebody validate me every day on yeah. multiple groups with the same comp or same posts across the three. Right. And not then, talking about anybody specific, just and in then, general. Just, just in general. Here's a tip. Do not directly message the group moderator and copy paste the post she didn't reply to because she already saw it three places. And then when she says, if I had had a response for it, I would have put it in one of the three spots I saw you post that today and then block her. You know who you are. (laughs) It was me. I'm a little (laughs) It was me, I blocked Morgan everywhere. (laughs) <laughs> except on zoom apparently except on zoom i i didn't remember to do that somehow she just showed up <laughs> so here we are oh my up. gosh i was i was just like <clears throat> i i was like hey if you want to be like i understand that people may you know not understand social cues and whatnot and i was like hey what you need to do is comment on other people's stuff and don't post three times a day on your stuff right try to be a member contribute to the community don't just ask for things yeah and after four months he still hadn't written page one yeah and i understand world building and i understand planning and that's totally fine but stop spamming a group that posts three times a week with three posts a day you gotta you gotta recognize where you are right i think that there's like when we talk about toxic productivity there's that line which we talked about, but there's Sorry. also the, the, you keep disappearing being... CJ Bloyer. I'm sorry. You there's magic. The, I know. I'm so sorry. I tried it. I tried fixing it. I, don't. I fixed it for a second. Um, there you go. Did that work? Oh, yes. That works. Um, but I also think we have to individually, we have to be honest with ourselves Uh like i need to be real honest when i'm using reading as a crutch an excuse yes um because i can i can hide in books they're a lovely place to hide i don't have any responsibilities i don't have anybody breathing down my neck it's somebody else's problems that i can watch happen and i don't have to be invested and so one of the things that i try to do it's one of the reasons i really like kindle um particularly kindle unlimited um Mm -hmm. because the library gets mad when you write in their books um but i really like the ability oh no to make notes okay as i read to highlight make notes even if I'm just reading something fun, um, that can be, it can be helpful. It can be, um, educational and making, but making sure that I do that and not just, not just read and make an excuse that, oh, I'm, I'm researching when I'm not really doing that. Your computer is nuts. I'm just going to be. Your computer might for a little bit. might just just got a little people living in its head. 
That's but possible. I, I haven't necessarily dealt with people, but I've, I've definitely come across the ideas and it, it definitely influenced me early on when I was trying to do the writing consistently. And that's why I had to institute the months off where mm-hmm. I'm not yeah. trying to get anything done. And yeah. that's why I had to go back and be like, hey, if I didn't hit my goal, I do not spend the next month catching up. I take my break anyway. I yeah. need yeah. the break. And and I recognize that I need grace with myself. If, you know, mm-hmm. my mom's in and out of the hospital some month, maybe I'm not going to be productive that month because right. I got stuff going on. And even though, yes, I have the time, I don't have the mental capacity right then. Right. And yeah. so- yeah. I try to be as good of a friend to myself as I am to my actual friends. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> right. And the, and that's um, hard. the other thing so is, hard. is that, you know, everyone here is, has other stuff they're doing as well. Like aside yeah. from like, we all have other things that we have to put time into to earn money. Um, and if, if you have the luxury of not having to do that, whether you be, you know, you're living with someone else who, makes the bills or you yourself just make bills on your writing, which is bomb for you, but I I don't don't live that life. Um, (laughs) But uh, like that does make a difference. And I think that's one of the things that the kind of like hustle, hustle, hustle stuff leaves in the dust. I have literally had people say to me, well, if you have a day job, you can't be that serious about writing. Well, I'm not, I, I am serious about, you know, Eating right, right. I'm and, also and serious about alive. right, like having electricity and yeah. things of that nature. I'm, I, I'm actually, I'm passionate about those things. <laughs> having a place yeah. to live, right? Like that well, doesn't affect my writing. <laughs> like, yeah, it would be incredibly difficult off for my... me to write right. if I'm living under a bridge in a tent. Right. It's not it's... impossible. I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying it. It makes it so much more difficult. If I have to scrounge for everything. Yeah. yeah. If if I ever get my house paid off, then I'll start thinking about writing full time. But first people, I need to publish stuff and people need to buy it because right. I cannot exist on, oh, that was good. And, you know, three star reviews right. or lack thereof. Right. Right. And realistically no one thing is probably going to be the thing that does it you know like if you're gonna if you're gonna have um the ability to live on your writing it is probably not going to be overnight just on just right statistically speaking it probably will not they they don't quit your day job yes right i have a a writing a writer friend who just put out her fourth or fifth novel um and She did not, I think her first novel, she contributed to a few um, Bible study anthologies and she wrote, um, I think it was a poetry book, something for children, um, early on in her career, but she wasn't able to write full time until she retired and she was uh, she was a teacher she taught um special ed for Mm -hmm. 30 years and even now while her you know she makes some income um much of her ability comes from the fact that she lives with somebody who has far more financial security like her husband takes so Oops. like you know she has that luxury um but she you know she talks about yeah now she can write five novels in five years and you know get it all out there and put it you know but much of her life was spent raising children teaching full time um and writing in between yeah. So I think that that what you what you talked about, Morgan, is giving giving ourselves grace. Um, my other issue is that, <laughs> and I alluded to this earlier, I have a tendency to not um, calculate how much of an impact something new in my life is going to 
yeah take so i quit my full-time office job to teach full-time and so i could write like that was the whole purpose um and then ended up taking on a part-time job because teaching wasn't quite paying the bills did that for a couple of years finally got to the point where i could pay the bills teaching and then COVID came along um and so I'm back at a part-time job. Now, I only work 10 hours a week there. Mm -hmm. But 10 hours a week includes an hour of commute every, you know, every time I go in. So it's, an, it's half an hour there, half an hour back. Um, and that's, so that's six hours. I work five hours a shift. I work two days a week. But that means that that extra 10 hours or 12 hours or whatever <clears throat> that's not only time that i can't write but time that is not relaxing or preparing to write mm -hmm. it takes a toll and so you have to like i need to be better and that's something i need to work on is being better at calculating what is it really going to cost me if I do this? Thing? Oh, sure. I can do that thing. That's not a problem. Right. It's only going to take me, it's only going to take 10 hours of my week. Right. Well, am I already doing too much? Am I already doing other things is, you know, do I need to change? And that's where that whole, like, um, reassessing when you're product, uh, productive, mm, yeah. um, moving was incredibly stressful for me it threw me unintentionally it threw me into a depressive cycle um and it took me the better part of the last year to get through it there were other things it wasn't just moving but that was kind of a catalyst right um and so like i have felt less than productive this entire year this you know past 12 months because this wasn't what I was supposed to be doing. And so, yeah, yeah that yeah. giving yourself grace is I think essential to ensuring that you don't, you don't give up just because things aren't working out the way someone else said they should. Right. You just pulled i I'm not even supposed to be here today. I'm not even supposed to be here today. That's true. All right, let's see. Um, Eva said moving is a big deal. We moved in October, and again at the end of March, uh, really saps the creative. Well, don't don't give up. Just use a bookmark. Is that? <laughs> yeah. That's uh, sometimes you know. Yeah, that's. Oh, yeah. God, I don't ever want to move again, and eventually we'll probably have to. But you know, just because life happens, but. God, I don't want to. Moving is horrible. Uh -huh. My parents moved to a smaller house, and my mom told me afterwards that she said, we're dying in this house. I don't care what it takes. I said, okay. <laughs> I'll, um, <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> right? Like, I don't know if you know this, but it's not actually up to us. Yeah. I don't know if you're aware. I have no say in that. Like, I know this isn't in the Bible, but it sort of is. Shit happens. <laughs> they just put it different. They just they just use slightly different words. Right, but but it's there. It's there if we, you want. We it's know what subtext. they mean. Yeah, for sure. All right. Um, well, does anyone have anything they want to say that we haven't gotten out? Um, I know we've talked quite a Eva bit about... Eva asked what our ideal week of productivity would look like. With our day jobs, I would assume. I would assume that would mean like with our current life choices. Uh, yeah. Sure. Um, why not? Yeah, for me it would be um that I would write for at least an hour a night, probably. Um, Monday through Friday, and then on the weekend I would um <clears throat> probably I would probably pick a day that I would write and the other day I would just not write yeah 
So that would probably be. What about you guys? You go, Morgan. Um, on a good week, I would probably want an hour of writing on Monday and Wednesday, maybe two hours on Thursday and Friday and then Sunday. Um, so with, you know, a couple date nights and my blog on Wednesdays. So, Word. Um, yeah, yeah. And, you know, with any luck, whatever the nano for that many hours is, I don't know, 8,000 words a week. <laughs> right um or you know yeah. 50 pages yeah. edited a week something like that right depending on which phase i'm in right. but you know that's with day job and everything else right right so light days except for thursdays and fridays and sundays because that's when i have larger chunks of time yeah gotcha. cj although yeah. Oh. Half my Fridays are busy and right. sometimes I'm out of town and life happens. So. Right. Yeah. Not the always. Life happens. Right. And I'm okay with that. I like life most of the time. Right. <laughs> it has its moments. It has its moments. Yeah. Um, for me, I would like to not have my part time job right now. <laughs> um i so ideally um and my part-time job is not long term so this even though it wouldn't work right now it's it has potential for the future um ideally i would wake up about 8 39 ish um and i'd read for an hour or two um and cuddle the kitties i mean priorities right. i was late to work this morning because somebody five minutes before my alarm curled up next to me oh yeah that's you're not getting up from that yep i mean do i look like a monster the answer is no by the way no right i um i had to spend half of my uh, lessons tonight my virtual lessons um sitting like a foot and a half further away from my camera than i normally do because bandit decided to take a nap on my lap and that was just and you just don't you gotta do what you gotta do yeah you just don't, you don't have any other options um but yeah get up cuddle the kitties uh read for an hour maybe two um and then I'd like to spend my late morning and early afternoon writing or, you know, working on whatever it is that I need to work on in the writing, whether it's editing or whatever. Um, and then because I, I teach, um, most of my students, I get them after school. So right. my, my afternoons, late afternoons and early evenings are all piano lessons. Um, and then I'd like to spend, cause I'm like you, Morgan, I, I tend to be more productive later in the day, especially if I haven't gotten up until like right now, because I'm working a part-time job that's mornings based by the time nine o'clock rolls around, I'm ready for bed my brain is done. I have, I have nothing left and my, my part-time job isn't even that difficult, but it takes one more aspect of my capacity. So, um, but I'd like to be able to do some more, can I say light writing, light work. That's not really what I'm thinking. Not um, light work, light work. Not light work. <laughs> work that has a lighter capacity to it than what I might do later in the day or earlier in the day. Um, but yeah, just spend a little bit more time enjoying writing or write aspects of writing. Maybe I read some more. Maybe I um, do a quick pass through something I've already written, like that kind of thing in the evening before I go to bed. 
that's ideal. And in theory, it could happen. Right. Um, and then we go back to, you know, life happens. So. Yeah, Sky said um, ideal productivity would be average week, two solid hours of writing related work, no word page count, Monday through Friday, maybe more on the weekend depending on what's going on. Um, my problem during the week, like usually I would say two hours, except that um, Monday, half of all Wednesdays, Thursday, and Friday night I stream. So <laughs> right. So I may as well just let my Tuesday be light too. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, that's and that's part of the reason that I pretty much take Sunday off um, is because I have streams all the time. I, I take Saturdays off, which is why Sunday is my yeah. this way. I know I'm home and I'm settled in. And that way, after 630 my time, um, I've got the rest of the evening to chillax and settle in for the work week. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. And it's a time I knew I could commit to regularly. Yeah, I mean that's Which, that that's that the makes key. A big deal. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if you can't if you can't make it to the time that you schedule to uh do your stuff, then it kind of doesn't help any that you scheduled it. <clears throat> right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um all right. Well, why don't we go ahead and uh, tell everybody about ourselves and where they can find us, and then we'll wrap it up for the night. Um, and uh, yeah, so let's let's start with Morgan. Hi, I'm Morgan, and I am a writer, a blogger, a vlogger, a podcaster, and I've got one little short story published. But the rest of the time, I sit around writing and editing space fan or fantasy in general. Um, and yeah, so this week I was talking about a convention I paneled at last week and sharing an author spotlight video and over on the podcast writing tips and writerly musings I was talking about, but I'm not a YA writer, gender biases in um, publishing. Um, how women keep getting shelved with YA stuff even when they're writing strictly adult so uh yeah that's me awesome CJ my name is CJ Blair let's see if my uh camera will work this time oh I am the ghost of CJ Blair sort of <laughs> a writer of things there's more fuckery involved in that than you're aware is that your fault uh-huh okay um I'm CJ Blair. I'm a writer of things. My links are down below. I'm um, also a piano teacher um, and currently an administrative assistant. Um, you can catch me here basically every Friday night unless I'm out of town and there are loud children around um, or if I'm sick. Um, and yeah, that's that's me. Okay. And I am Sarah Sharnover, and I'm here on Friday nights, and I stream on my Twitch channel. Um, Monday nights, I play Stardew Valley. Thursday nights, I play games with other people. Last night, we played Party Hard 2, uh, me and Fairy Law, and it was uh, about a 9 out of 10 fuckery level, so it was great, um, <laughs> which is what I go for on Thursdays. Uh, so yeah, this is the new thing we're doing on Friday nights. Um, we're going to do some chats like this. We're going to, um, some of them I might have some more preparation for. We might have things to like actually look at and things like that. Um, but I'm still going to kind of work the kinks out. So if you guys have any ideas of things that you would like to see us talk about, um, please let me know. Uh, tw Twitter is probably the best place to message me. Um, although, uh, eventually I may have a discord cause I started one, but I haven't made it public because then I'd have to use it. Um, and what was the other thing I was going to say? Uh, if you're on the Twitch stream, there is a fundraiser for Planned Parenthood down below. If you could donate, that's lovely. If you cannot donate, please don't put yourself out. Um, do, do, do. I feel like there's something I'm forgetting and it's probably important, but I don't know what it is. Is it your two Twin Peaks podcast? No, but I should mention it. 
Uh, yes. <laughs> I don't think that's it. But yeah, we have the Twin Freaks podcast. Uh, the new episode should be up very soon. I just want to double check with everybody before I hit live. Um, and I also need to make sure that it's uh, not blocked because I keep having to argue with them about blocking it in on the planet. Like they block it on the whole planet. So, yeah. Yeah, one time it was like blocking North Korea and I was like... I don't know that I'm getting a lot of North Korean viewers, so I'm probably all right. Um, but yeah, like the whole planet is not going to work. Um, but yeah, so <sighs> anyway. Oh, listen to it because it's amazing. If you've seen Twin Peaks. Yes. Um, but yeah, so uh, also I am in the middle. This is it. I am in the middle of getting ready to do a collab, which requires no preparation on your end. All you would need to do is hop on a call with me uh, and respond to a couple of things. It is absolutely stupid. It requires nothing of you. You're not going to look stupid. It's just dumb. Um, but I think it's fun. So if you're interested in that, you should also hit me up on Twitter. I'm keeping a list and then I'm going to contact people to set up times. It's going to take like maybe a 20 minute, half hour Zoom call and that'll be it. So uh, hit me up if you're interested in doing that. So, all right. And, uh, yeah, so that'll do it for us tonight and we'll see you guys all next week. So bye. bye.